Uh, we're getting started a bit late, but no worries. You'll have a complete week to uh, provide input and feedback on this week's material. We're moving on to pricing. Pricing is a pretty important topic, uh, as are all of the four Ps, but in, in particular, if you look at this slide, the more interesting part of it, uh, I would argue, is the third bullet, if you will, or block. Price allocates resources in a free market economy. The reason that's kind of impactful and has significant meaning is that you, know, you may have, let's say, five competitors selling a product, but it's the one that has the right combination of the right product, proper promotion, proper distribution, and more importantly, at the right price that people are willing to pay for it. So if one company ends up getting a lot more market share because that price for all those underlying elements in the product, its availability and how it's promoted is just right, then they end up getting money, they can grow their business, they can offer more products, they can do more things, and the competitors that don't, right, because it's not at a price point that makes sense, that causes people to take out their debit card and their credit card and their cash and pay for it, well, you know, that's what the beauty of the system is and that's how it works. So price does allocate resources. So the people that are successful, they get more resources, more money to be able to do more things. Those that are not, don't. And that's very simply how it works. So price and setting it right is very significant uh, and has a big impact on uh, where things go. It's what consumers give up in exchange for good or service. Um, and it's not obvious to me. There are some situations where maybe you're not as worried about profit when you're starting out and you can't do that and you have to set prices and, and have the market move to you. So that's kind of important. There are many things that influence price, how many competitors there are, how many different options of products there are, what's happening with the greater economy. The internet, you think about the impact that's had on car sales. People now can find out exactly what a dealer pays for invoice and then that provides you with a lot more ability to negotiate. So as I mentioned earlier, there are different pricing objectives other than making profit that might seem off a little bit, but there certainly are. Sometimes you're profit oriented, sometimes you just want to generate revenue, sometimes you just keep it the way it is. And even within profit oriented pricing, there's profit maximization, making reasonable profits, and then looking at a return on investment. All those things have an impact on uh, your strategy and how you uh, your pricing model. So profit maximization, pretty simple. You're just trying to get as much profit as you can. Largest amount of revenue relative to your costs. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there are some products where that makes sense and others where it doesn't. Uh, you want to return on investment. This is how you measure it. You take your net profit after taxes divided by total assets. ROI is a very common metric in the financial world. Uh, if you're looking at sales-oriented objectives, it's about market share and sales maximization. Very often, what companies want to do when they first start out is to get as much revenue as they can and market share and the profits hopefully follow after that. Market share is very important. It's very simple. Your percentage of sales for total sales uh, as a as a percentage of total sales in the market. Right? It's just really that uh, straightforward. There's different kinds of market share depending, you know, whether you're talking about the total available market or the one that you serve. But that's uh, and and getting good market share is is pretty important actually. Um, you know, sales maximization, again, you have a short-term objective to maximize the sales. You don't worry so much about profit, competition. And maybe you have a, a warehouse full of stuff and you want to unload it. That's kind of important as well. Uh, sometimes you just want to move the product because it's costing you money. So you just kind of you know, move forward from there. Status quo, you just kind of keep things the way they are. You meet competition. There are some markets where that makes sense to do that. And setting price, a, lo a lot of it has to do with supply and demand, and there's something known as the supply and demand curve. So what you do is you have to look at the intersection between supply and demand to set what a price is. Here's a demand curve. They tend to start up and you know 
uh, up at the upper left hand corner and then go down so as your prices go down quantity demand goes up seems to make sense right if you make something a little less expensive people want to buy more of it supply curve is the exact opposite as your prices go up um, and that has to do a lot with what the quality of the underlying product is okay and then the way you establish an equilibrium on price is where the debt demand and supply curves meet and then you have something called elasticity of demand which has to do with how consumers respond to prices uh, changes in price so here's the perfect example of talking about price equilibrium let's say I make great chocolate chip cookies and every week let's say that's the supply and demand curve for this kind of chocolate chip cookie the type quality of ingredients where it's available so on and so forth so let's say that I end up having at the end of the day on average more cookies than I can sell well if I were to drop the price of those cookies because I have a surplus right so now the cookies are less expensive for people to buy then there's a higher probability that they would buy more because you have a surplus now let's say I run out of these cookies every day because there's such demand from their spectacular chocolate chip cookies more than likely I can increase my price because there's a demand for it and still sell enough so depending on whether you're a surplus or a shortage you can adjust prices accordingly one of the more common areas to think about price equilibrium is what's happening in the real estate market if it's a buyer's market that means that there's a surplus of homes and pricing is going to be driven down because there's more than the market can consume conversely if you're in a small area and there's a big demand for those uh, homes you could bid prices up and people would probably still buy so price equilibrium and supply demand curves. I mean that's we're, we're not going to a macro or microeconomics class here but that's a pretty good simple explanation of how price equilibrium works elasticity of demand consumers buy more or less product when the price changes that's elastic demand inelastic is there is an increase or decrease in price it won't significantly affect demand best example of inelastic products would be gasoline or pharmaceuticals so for instance let's say you're a uh, an insulin user you're diabetic it doesn't really matter too much what happens to the price of insulin within reason or even without <laughs> outside of reason if you need insulin to live every day if the price doubles one day from the next you still need insulin otherwise the consequences are grave so you know that price can change a little or a lot but the demand is is set up by how many people need insulin similarly if you are driving a car and you need to get to work every day and the price of gas goes up 20 30 40 50 cents in one day you still need to get to work you may do some adjustments to how you deal with that but the demand still is pretty much there it would take a lot of adjustment in price for a even reasonable amount of demand change to happen so those are good examples of the elasticity of demand there are some products where if they cost a lot less people will buy a ton and if they cost more they just won't buy as much so very important in setting pricing elasticity of demand here's the mathematical version of that if E is greater than 1, it's elastic. If it's less than 1, it's inelastic because it's the percentage change in quantity versus the percentage change in price. Uh, let's give you an example of elasticity. Things that affect demand. Is there a substitute? Let's say a product is only kind of one available. It is what it is. You're pretty much stuck with that. There's not many substitutes. How much it costs, right? Is it a $2 item or a $2,000 item? is it durable is it going to last can you do other things with it what's happening with the greater economy and the impact on money and what you want and not want to spend all these things affect demand choosing price strategies and we talked about that if you talk about price skimming a high price heavy promotion talk about penetration pricing you charge a low price a way to get market share that's pretty important you talk about status quo just keep it the way it is so these are all pricing strategies price skimming goes well when you have inelastic demand something that's unique there's 
legal protection, whether it be a patent or a trademark. Maybe it's something that's a revolutionary product and people really can't get in. So you, that really means you can charge pretty much whatever you want. Penetration pricing, uh, pricing is you're trying to get in there, get market share, get a foothold on the market, keep these other guys out. You want to move a lot of product. Uh, it helps get sales and hopefully helps generate some profit down the road. And you can help justify uh, you know, production and building product and moving forward with that. Status quo, you know, it's not exciting. It's very simple. Um, you know, people don't start getting into a price war and killing each other. So uh, there are plenty of markets that exhibit that as well. So setting price is an iterative process. You start with some goals. Look at what it costs you to do it. You choose a strategy. You, you know, you fine tune it. You look at what the market tells you. You reset and you kind of go back and always look at what makes sense. There are issues associated with pricing that the government looks at. There's unfair trade practices, price dumping, uh, you know, fixing price collusion where companies get together and set a price, which the government tends to frown on. So there's all kinds of elements, you know, or let's say there's a natural disaster and people come in and double and triple the prices of their services that are required with dealing with that. So all these things are something that the government takes a very narrow view at and things that you need to look at. There's all kinds of specific techniques on fine-tuning pricing, discounts, geographic pricing, uh, rebates, cash discounts, two-for-ones, um, you know, zero percent fine. All these things are, are tools that retailers and customers, and I assume you're not customers, but companies have to try and motivate people to buy. Uh, Value-based pricing is very important uh, with what's happening that's going towards generics and lower-end products that are commodities, if you will. One thing to be very careful about is when you set prices that are too low to maybe do penetration pricing, get some market share. If you don't get the market share and hold on to that and be able to recover your prices down the road and you can never adjust them up, you're in trouble. So that's something to definitely keep in mind for sure. Uh, geographic pricing, you know, some areas, you know, FOB is free on board, free on board or free on board. Uh, a lot of it has to do with, you know, shipping something. Let's say you're in Massachusetts and you're shipping it to someone in Mass. That's one thing. If you need to ship it out to California, it's going to cost you more money. You might have to adjust that pricing accordingly. Uh, there's all kinds of other things. The only one I'll focus on here is bait pricing. It's also known as bait and switch. Um, you say, hey, look, come in. We've got this product here. You end up showing up. Oh, we only had two or three of those. We've already sold out, but we have these other things. Government takes a very narrow and unacceptable view of that as well. Um, product line pricing, won't spend too much time on that. Uh, suppliers uh, and, you know, you have people who provide content and product and components for other companies that make products all have an impact on pricing and people are always trying to get a lower price for things. The uh, we'll, we'll post some discussions on Walmart, um, uh, at least one or two fora, uh, which has to do with their foray into the drugstore or uh, drug uh, pr uh, you know, providing uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals to customers. They've become the number three pharmacy in the country, just behind uh, CVS and Walgreens, uh, and they've done it in a very interesting way. And then we have the discussion on Dell, um, and I'll put up a four there, which is what's happening with them and moving into another country and the, you know, the issues with pricing in India versus China or the United States or a European country as well. So uh, let's see, anything else I want to include that? that that'll about cover for this week, and I will... Uh, do my best to see if we can have a group Skype call with just a few weeks left in the class to kind of see how we're doing and, and uh, just review any questions you guys may have. So I'll send that out via a note, um, via email. Talk to you soon. Thanks.